All right, welcome back. We're on our second video about multiplying and dividing integers. So now we're just going to talk about division. And in a lot of uh, math circumstances, division is the most challenging of all the operations, but I've got great news for you. Um, in this unit, dealing with positive and negative numbers, the rules for division are exactly the same as the rules for multiplication. So you already know the rules. The rules are, if there's an Odd, odd amount of negative numbers, then the quotient, right, the answer to a division problem is negative. So just like in the previous uh, video about multiplying, if one of the numbers in the division problem is negative, then the result, the answer, the quotient is also going to be negative. But if there's an even amount, like if both of the numbers are negative in the division problem, well, then the quotient is going to become positive because it's going to hop to negative and then hop back. So this is great. We can just hop right to it. Look at this, 20 divided by five. Oh my gosh, I remember that one. That's four. No problem there, right? That's just back to fourth grade math, right? All right, what about 20 divided by negative five? Well, there's one negative sign, which means it flips everything to the negative zone. So our answer is gonna be negative four. The third problem, negative 20 divided by five. Well, there's one negative sign, that means it's going to flip to negative. So that's going to be negative four. And lastly, the last problem, negative 20 divided by negative five, the negatives divide away, right? Goes to the negative and then back to the positive. Our answer is positive four. So again, we have that situation where no negatives and two negatives get the same answer. And then one negative in either location gets the same answer. Okay, so why did I make a whole video then if it's this simple? Well, it's because there's one other thing that we really need to talk about with division. And that is something that you've probably talked about in previous math classes, but it's really important for me to highlight this for y'all. And that is the fact that uh, when we look at a fraction, we often think of a fraction as a spot on the number line, but it is also a division problem. And so when we think about the fraction bar, it's actually a division symbol. Like if we think about, you know, the fraction one half, and then we think about the division symbol, well, the division symbol is just a fraction bar with dots instead of numbers. Um, so let me give you an example. Um, let's take the fraction uh, six halves. Now we can think of six halves as a place on the number line, right? So this would be, you know, zero, one half, two halves, three halves, four halves, five halves, six, oops, six halves. Can I go back? There we go. All right, and we know that, you know, this is just like a number, right? It's on the number line. Well, what number is that? Well, of course, two halves is the number one because we know any number over itself is one. Four halves is the number two, and six halves is the number three, right? And that's also true if we simplify this fraction, we would get, you know, three over one, which is three. But it's also true that it's the answer to the division problem, six divided by two equals three. So if you ever see a fraction and you can do the division problem of the fraction, numerator divided by denominator, do it. Because a division problem is a fraction. It's going to get you the answer that simplifying the fraction is gonna get you. So anytime we see a fraction, it's also a division problem. And if you can do the division problem, do it. That'll get you your answer. Um, so now let's look at some fractions that we might care about. Okay, so in this uh, circumstance, 30 tenths, 30 tenths. Well, that's also the division problem, 30 divided by 10. And what is 30 divided by 10? Well, it's, Three, okay. What about 30 over negative 10? So we've got this negative symbol. Well, remember if there's one negative sign, that means the result, the quotient, the answer is going to be negative. So 30 divided by negative 10 would be negative three. We go to the next problem, negative 30 over 10. Well, we do negative 30 divided by 10 and we get negative three. 
And then the last one here, negative 30 over negative 10. Well, the negatives divide with each other, right? Flips to negative, then back to positive. So our final answer is going to be three. And we see that exact same situation where if there's one negative sign, the answer is negative. And if there's a pair of negative signs, the answer flips back to being positive. And so notice that in a fraction, um, I think I have, no, I do not have one more slide. So let me uh, go back and do this. In a fraction, you might have, uh, let's see, let's go with negative one over two. Um, let's go with one over negative two and let's go with a negative sign in front of one half. Well, what do all these equal? Well, negative one over two, if we divide that, we know one half, normal one half is 0 0.5. So this would be negative 0 0.5. Well, what about one divided by negative two? Well, it's the same thing, 0 0.5, but the negative sign makes it negative. It would be negative 0 0.5. And then lastly, a negative sign in front of a half just means a negative sign in front of a half as a decimal. So what does that tell you? All three of these equal each other, which means a negative sign in the numerator has the same meaning as a negative sign in the denominator or a negative sign in front of the entire fraction. If there's that one negative sign, it's gonna make the result negative. All right, thank you all so much. Good luck.